In the aftermath of the devastating fire at Grenfell Tower in June 2017, a key question was how the blaze had been able to so quickly and fiercely get out of control. Within days, the flammability of the cladding panels covering the tower block were being blamed for the ferocity of the blaze. Since then, hundreds more residential towers across the country have been found to be covered in similar materials, leading to them being deemed unsafe and their cladding needing to be urgently replaced. It's work that's likely to cost millions. Of course, there's no price that can be put on keeping people safe, but some of the residents who live in these buildings find that they themselves are bearing the brunt of a very tricky and expensive problem. Midsummer. 2017, and an estate in West London was soon to become the focus of the nation. The London Fire Brigade right now are dealing with a serious fire in a tower block in West London. What's believed to have started as a fire in a fridge freezer soon turned into a devastating blaze that spread rapidly through the 24-storey building on the Lancaster West Estate in North Kensington. 72 people died and dozens more were injured. As the extent of the damage became clear, questions were immediately asked about why the fire was able to take hold so quickly. From very early on in the investigation, fire safety experts suggested that the external panels which had covered the building, the cladding, were made of materials that increased its flammability. And it very quickly became clear that local authorities and private developers across the UK may well have fitted similar types of cladding on tower blocks up and down the country. So in light of what had happened at Grenfell Tower, these could no longer be considered safe. Well, since then, the government has announced that it will pay to remove potentially dangerous cladding from tower blocks owned by councils and housing associations. But for those living in flats that are privately owned, the question of who will fund such vital repairs is less clear-cut. Shaz Rana lives on the fifth floor of this block in Croydon. She bought her flat ten years ago and set about making it a home she could be proud of. It meant everything because we had saved up for so many years to buy our first property and being so close to London, it was an achievement for us. It was just the position of where it was. It was on the corner, it had a balcony, it had two bedrooms, it was perfect. But Shaz bought her flat leasehold, which means that although she technically owns the bricks and mortar, the land on which the building sits is owned by a private landlord. So as long as Shaz owns the property, she has to pay an annual fee to lease the land and cover the costs of any work or repairs on the building. Now, none of that was initially a problem for Shaz, because when she moved in, the building was only about seven years old. When you're buying a modern building, you don't expect it to have any problems. We would expect a new building like this to meet any health and safety regulations that there are. We would have expected it to be um, up to standard. In fact, when Shaz bought her flat, it didn't need any significant work and it did meet all building regulations. But following the fire at Grenfell Tower, all that changed. The entire building is clad in this material that you can see now. Residents received a letter from First Port, the company that manages the flats on behalf of the freeholder, telling them that the cladding on their building was unsafe and as such would need to be tested. The cladding is not even something that would come to the forefront of your mind when you're buying a property. When the tests were complete, residents were told the cladding would need to be replaced. What's more, as it was now considered a potential fire risk, 24-hour fire marshals would need to be put in place to keep the building safe until the job was completed. But all of this was going to cost, and as it was considered essential repair and maintenance work, as per the terms of their lease, it was Shaz and the other leaseholders who were in line to foot the bill, to the tune of more than £5,000 each. I remember being at work and being told that there was um, a letter where it really stuck in an awful situation where we have to pay this or continue to live in a dangerous place. But worse was to come for Shaz and her neighbours. 
the true costs proved far higher than expected and they were told in January 2018 that the revised figure for replacing the cladding was a whopping £2 million, a bill that once again would have to be paid for by leaseholders. So Shaz's £5,000 plus share was now set to rise to over £31,000, a figure she had no idea how she'd be able to pay. I, mean, I work for the NHS. I'm not working in a job where I'm being paid, you know, millionaires' wages. So for me to find that is going to be just extremely difficult. Even if Shaz was able to afford the costs, as far as she's concerned, it should be up to the freeholder, a company called Proxima GR Properties Limited, to pay to make the building safe again. We would never have ever dreamed that we would have to actually pay for the structure of the building when we were informed that it was safe to live in. And so it is, it's, it's just ridiculous and immoral and um, unfair that we have to find that kind of money to pay for or something that is not our fault and something that we never envisaged would happen. Well, of course, Chaz's neighbours have also been hit with the same massive costs for the replacement cladding. Hello, everyone. Hi, Chaz. Hi. Many of them, like Chaz, are determined to fight the charges and have come together to discuss how best to do that. How's everyone feeling? I personally feel betrayed. Yeah. yeah. We've got our home, which is at risk. Yeah. The thing is, it's a ridiculous amount of money to ask anyone of. Who would even have that? It just seems ludicrous. I mean, we still don't know the final price that we are all liable for. Martin Boyd from the Leasehold Knowledge Partnership thinks that though leaseholders would ordinarily have to pay a part of any costs for the maintenance and repair of their building, in situations such as this one, residents could argue that those rules no longer apply. But they'd have a battle on their hands to prove that. Under most leases, yes, the leaseholder is obliged to pay. However, morally and ethically, um, they shouldn't be paying. It's a defect in the system. The leaseholders aren't, aren't responsible for installing defective cladding. All of the developers are saying they met the relevant BSI standard, the material passed the relevant tests, and yet somehow that material is now failing these tests. So the developer is saying, I did my job at the right time, um, but government is now saying those buildings are no longer safe. Well, this is a situation echoed in high-rise buildings across the country. And in Salford, Greater Manchester, another of those affected is first-time buyer Will Stanton. He's been told that the service charge on his apartment will shoot up from just under £100 a month to around £272 a month. That's because his property is also covered in cladding that's been deemed a fire risk. So he needs to contribute to the cost of two full-time fire wardens to monitor the property round the clock. I don't really think it's fair uh, at all. My service charge has almost tripled, really. I don't really have any more savings behind me um, to pay for an increase in, in, the, in the service charge. For Will and his neighbours, the shock bill has really taken the shine off their homes. I think it's incredibly unfair. I followed all the right procedures. I, I saved really hard. In my eyes, I did everything right, and I'm still in this position where I could potentially lose everything. In December 2017, Will and his neighbours did try and challenge the costs by taking their management company to a tribunal. But the judge ruled that, as leaseholders, the residents were liable for the increased charges. The ruling was a double blow to Will and the other residents, who feared that when the unsafe cladding on their building was eventually replaced, the bill for that would also fall to them. And Will knows that the far higher costs of that would price him out of his home completely. If I lost the flat, um, I'd be absolutely devastated. I'd never be able to save up the same sort of money um, I did previously to be able to buy it. So it would have a huge impact um, on, on me personally, definitely. Property lawyer Anthony Huddersman says that if you're considering buying a flat with any sort of cladding, then in light of the Grenfell Tower fire, it's well worth asking your solicitor to carry out a few extra checks. People who are looking to buy a flat, if it does have cladding, they need to inform their solicitor who can advise them properly on that and investigate it properly. They need to instruct a surveyor and have a proper survey done so the surveyor can advise them 
on the suitability and safety of the cladding and also they're buying with a mortgage, let their lender know as well. Well, the freeholder of Will's property, Ian J Estates, says it's continuing to progress the most cost-effective solution for recladding the building, with every effort being made to keep costs for leaseholders to a minimum. As part of that, it is in constructive discussions with the provider of the building guarantee and hopes that an agreement can be reached to cover some of those costs in the coming months. Well, we'll be keeping an eye out for any developments on Will's situation. And for the residents in Croydon, there has eventually also been much better news. It didn't initially seem that way after a tribunal ruled that it is they and not the freeholder who are liable to pay for the replacement cladding on their building. However, Proxima GR Properties told us they were conscious that the costs involved were high and that they were working closely with the property manager to find a solution. But we then had an update from the management company First Port, who told us that the building's original developer, Barrett Developments PLC, has offered to pay for the recladding project and the interim fire safety measures. Barrett has since stressed to us that the development was built in line with all building regulations in place at the time of construction, and that while it no longer owns the building or has any liability for the cladding, it is committed to putting customers first and ensuring that owners and residents have peace of mind. But while that announcement has come as a huge relief to Shaz and her neighbours, management company First Port did caution that this decision does not set any precedent for similar sites. It too called on the government to offer up meaningful plans to support leaseholders across the country. And with hundreds of tower blocks still to have their cladding replaced, unless that happens, many homeowners, through no fault of their own, face shouldering the cost of these repairs themselves. A situation Will doesn't think is at all fair. Fundamentally, it's not an issue that the leaseholders are responsible for. To have to pay to um, make the building safe um, isn't, isn't fair at all.